G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam, and in this video, I'm gonna introduce you to the HTTP post function in Anscript, and I'll show you how you can use it on your cloud pages with an example of making an API call to a marketing cloud endpoint. So to begin with, let's have a look at the HTTP post documentation. So to start with, the HTTP post function allows us to send a payload of information from our marketing cloud cloud page to an endpoint. We can do so by specifying a couple of ordinals within our function. To begin with, we must specify a destination or an endpoint to send the package to. We can specify the content type, that is the encoding of the information that we're going to send. The content, of course, we wish to post in our values, as well as the output parameter to capture the response. We can also optionally set a name value pair of headers to send in our HTTP post function as well. But as always, the best way to try this out is by having a look for ourselves inside of a Marketing Cloud cloud page. So let's jump into Marketing Cloud and have a look for ourselves. To start with, we can make ourselves a new collection, we can jump into it and then make ourselves a brand new content page. Make a landing page content type today. Let's go HTTP post. We can go next and just choose the blank page type for today as we try out the code for ourselves. Now, as always, we can also jump back into the documentation and copy the example code to start from. So I'll copy this code here. And we can jump back into our cloud page. And once the page loads, we can drag and drop a HTML content block into our cloud page. We can start off by pasting that copied code. So as you can see, the HTTP post function allows us to specify that URL, the uh, content type that we're going to be sending, a example content piece or the package to send, as well as the response that we get back from the endpoint. So for our example today, let's go through and do an API call to retrieve a Marketing Cloud REST token. So we can receive an access token from our server server integrations by checking the documentation, which I'll link in the comments below. So we can scroll down and see how this payload is called. So to start with, we do need to specify our host location with the post endpoint of v2 token. The content type will be application JSON, and here's an example of the payload that we have to send. So let's start to copy in those pieces. To start with, we'll copy in the URL. So it's that first part there, we copy it in and paste it into our URL, the first ordinal. We also need the next part, this v2 token. So I'll copy that and paste it in there as well. Now for the content type, we're not gonna send HTML text. We in fact wanna send application JSON. So I'll copy that and paste it into our second ordinal. Now thirdly is our content. Now we could declare it as a variable in AMP script, or we can just paste the plain text straight in. We have a few options here. So what I'll do, I'll copy this code here. I'll go back into our cloud page. And what I can do is we'll quickly edit up this code so it's the exact payload that we have to send. So I'll bring all these values in onto one line, just like that. Now with the access code, we actually don't require a couple of these values. We don't need the scope or the account ID. Those are optional fields. So I might drop those two out for this one. Don't need scope and don't need the account ID. There we go, a bit neater. So we just need from that section to the start there. So we can copy this text, cut it and paste it into our content, just like that. Now our content does need a few credentials. Our grant type will stay as client credentials we do need to fill in our client ID and our client secret. These values, of course, are just some test values from the documentation. So I can jump into my setup. I've gone and created a quick temporary install package earlier on. I can go in, I can copy my client ID and client secret. So I'll copy those two values, client ID, and paste where client ID equals client ID. The client secret, I'll copy that value there and paste into my client secret. Perfect. Now the at call status is the returned value once the call is done. So to see what it looks like, I'm gonna go and put a few lines in, and use my v function to paste that call status value straight back out again. Just like that, and I'll even say call status is equal to that value. Now there's one last thing you have to do, which is to specify the correct destination for our call. It's not just the v2 token, we need to specify our subdomain. Now back on our setup page, we can see our subdomain in our authentication based URI. So I can copy that value and then replace all the way up to the .com in this code here and paste. And that is the complete value for our HTTP post to try and return our server to server token. So let's try it out. We'll go schedule and post and see what the response is. 
Okay, good start. So 200 call and our call status contains our access token, that great big payload there. Fantastic. Now, unfortunately, working with JSON in AmScript is not very easy. So what we'll do is we'll go back. I've actually got a link which I'll put in the video description below to my blog. We've actually got a little bit of code which can help us out today. So what we can do is we can copy our code from my uh, OAuth2 access token quick start. We can scroll down. What I'm going to do, we're going to copy out these last few lines here, this access token and the rest instance URL. Those values there are going to be very, very helpful since they contain some regex code, which we can use to copy out the values that we need from the response API. So we'll go back into here. And what we can do is we can make sure that we get those two responded values. So the call response is that value there, the call status. We go into regex match the call status, place that value there and that value there, getting the access token and the rest API. Perfect. We have to do this, of course, within a AMP script code block. So let's wrap our code just like that. And now we should have an access token and a rest instance URL. But we can check it out for ourselves by outputting those two values as well to make sure those codes work properly. So we'll try it out by copying and pasting those values down, just like that. And again, we'll try it out with a schedule and publish. And how does it look? Looking pretty good. All right. So of course we had our original payload coming back just here, which is a great big payload of text. But we managed to get our access token starting with EY, ending with KN, starting with EY, ending with KN. Perfect. And of course, our REST instance URL as well, which is our REST marking cloud, which looks like it came through somewhere in there as well. Perfect. So our API call is working so far. We've successfully used our HTTP POST function to make that call to our marketing cloud endpoint to return back those tokens. So let's go one step further now and we'll use the token that was responded in that last call to make one further call. Let's try and this time we're going to use one of the validate email functions. So I'll try and use a POST function to validate an email address. On our REST APIs, what we can do is we can scroll right back up to the top and get our documentation for our API call to validate an email address. So just like our token endpoint, we have our post address for a validate email call. Scroll down and see here is the API documentation here. It's very similar, except this time we have to call with some additional values. We need a header value called authorization for the value of bearer and our access token that we got from earlier. So let's try it out. Back on our cloud page, let's have a look at our code. And of course, we have a HTTP post function here. We can copy this down and use this code again. So let's get down to the bottom here. We'll paste it in. Now, our endpoint's a little bit different. It's going to be our REST URL that we had earlier. So we can copy our REST URL. And inside of our call here, we need to formulate a new REST endpoint. It's going to be that REST call that we just did with a bit of extra text. We have to go back into our documentation. And you can see here, it's address v1 validate email. So we can do this dynamically by going back in and using a concat function. So we'll go concat and starting with the REST based URL and ending with the address v1 validate email, closing off our concat. And we're going to make this call as an application JSON, of course, but we need another header with a name value pair of authorization and that bearer token. So going back to our HTTP post functions, we can see ordinal five and six is the name value pair. So we'll go back into our cloud page. We've got most of our call here. We'll come back and do our payload in just a second. So I'll just delete that for a moment because we need our fifth and sixth ordinals. So again, it's going to be our name value pairs for our post. We know the name. The name that we need to put in there is going to be our authorization. So we'll go back into our cloud page. Our fifth ordinal will be authorization. Our sixth ordinal has to be the value. So the value has to be bearer followed by the token. So we'll copy that value and go back into our cloud page. We'll can paste it in, but of course we can't just paste your access token. It needs to be the actual access token that we just retrieved. So copy that value, remove the text of access token and use another concat function. So go concat bearer and then the access token and close off the concat. Okay, looking good. All we need now is the payload to send. So 
If we go back to our documentation for the address validation, the payload looks something like this. We need to send an email address and then a list of validators to check against. So let's copy this one. We'll copy that payload just like that. Go back to our cloud page. And let's clean up that code so it's all on one line. So we'll clean this up, put it all back to one line and encapsulate it with single quotes. So it's our nice text string. Copy that payload and then we'll paste it where our payload goes in ordinal three, just like that. Now, as before, the response is gonna come through on that next ordinal, the call status. I'll call this one resp for now. What I can do is I can make sure I can copy the value of resp. I'll copy that function from above and we'll call resp equals resp. There we are. So our response based on our validation of our valid email address of help at example.com using these checkers, using the token we should have received just earlier. All right, let's give it a go. We'll go schedule and publish. And hopefully this API call will first make an API call to our server to server, retrieve a token, and then check our email address. So as you can see, it's come back. And of course the first call succeeded, great. Our second call here succeeded as well. And resp equals the email of helper email valid is false. It failed validation, the list detective validator. Okay, that's fair. It's a pretty fake looking email. Let's try a better looking email. So we'll go cancel. Let's try a new one, something like, where's our email address? There it is there. Let's try email address of astro at salesforce.com. Let's see if that email address can pass the validation. We'll try schedule and publish. Perfect, looking good. So astro at salesforce.com is a valid email address by the looks of it. It is structurally valid because it passed all of the previous validations. You can of course use the HTTP POST AMP script function to make outbound API calls to any endpoint that you want. But for today, I hope showcasing how to use the REST endpoint to retrieve a token, and then use that token to validate an email address has shown just how easy it is to set up your very own HTTP POST function in AMP script on a cloud page. And if you did enjoy today's video, then please let me know with a thumbs up and a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.